Katie, and I'm a physical oceanographer. No, that doesn't mean I'm a physically strong oceanographer. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. It means I study the physics of the ocean. Waves, currents, turbulence, basically how the oceans move and why they move that way, as well as physical properties of the ocean, such as temperature and sea level. The oceans affect even those of us who live far inland in many ways, for instance through effects on world climate. Still, I'm willing to bet most of you only care about physical oceanography in a few specific ways in your daily lives. Well, I'd like to address some of those topics in physical oceanography that have broad appeal, hopefully providing a good summary of things you might want to know about physical oceanography. Today, I'll talk about tsunamis, powerful displays of the ocean's might that seem to show up in the news all too frequently. Okay, so where do we start? How about with how tsunamis start? We usually think of tsunamis as being caused by earthquakes, but they can also be triggered by landslides, glacier calving, or volcanic eruptions, anything that causes the displacement of a huge amount of water. Tsunamis formed by these events, though, usually only affect nearby coastlines. The most infamous tsunamis in recent memory, such as the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004 and the Japan tsunami in early 2011, were caused by underwater earthquakes. Indeed, tsunamis are most commonly caused by seismic activity, that is, earthquakes, often at convergent boundaries between tectonic plates. A vertical shift in the ocean floor moves the entire water column above it, sending a series of tsunamis in all directions, like really big ripples in a really big pond. How fast does a tsunami travel? That depends on the depth of the water it is traveling through. The speed of a tsunami is calculated as the square root of the acceleration due to gravity times the depth of the water. So what does that translate to? Let's say we're at a point in the ocean that is 4,000 meters deep. If you've taken a physics course, you may recall that acceleration due to gravity is about 9.81 meters per second squared, but we'll round to 10 to make for an easy calculation. G times H is 10 times 4,000. That comes to 40,000, and the square root of that is 200 meters per second. That's about 450 miles per hour. That's fast. In depths over 5,000 meters deep, quite common in the open ocean, tsunamis can travel over 500 miles per hour, reaching speeds as fast as a commercial jet plane. You may have heard that out in the open ocean, tsunamis can pass underneath boats without notice. That's because in the deep open ocean, tsunamis have very gradual slopes and aren't very tall, maybe just three feet or so. What makes a tsunami huge, even in the open ocean, is its wavelength, that is, the distance between two consecutive wave crests. Typical ocean waves that you see washing up on the beach have wavelengths that are usually several hundred feet long or less. Tsunamis can have wavelengths over a hundred miles long. What happens when a tsunami gets close to shore? You may have heard that a tsunami recedes before surging ashore. This is often but not always the case. Remember that waves have both high points and low points, crests and troughs. If the trough is traveling in the front, the water level on shore will go down before it goes up. If you're ever at the beach and the water level goes down far faster than the tide goes out, it's a good sign a tsunami is coming and you should get to high ground. If the crest of the wave is leading, though, there will not be this advance warning. Even if a tsunami isn't tall in the open ocean, it can become very tall when it gets into shore. Remember how a tsunami's speed is related to the depth of the water? In shallow water, a tsunami moves more slowly. As the wave slows down, its height increases to conserve energy, since the energy of the wave depends on both its speed and its height. How tall do tsunamis get? Large tsunamis can be well over 30 feet high, even over 100 feet if near the point of the tsunami's creation, though most tsunamis are much smaller. However, they don't need to be very tall to cause extensive damage. For instance, the July 2006 earthquake south of Java created a 10-foot-high tsunami that killed over 600 people and destroyed buildings more than 200 yards inland. You might be thinking right now that 10-foot waves don't sound all that big. On the north shore of Oahu, a region famous for surfing, waves regularly exceed 20 or 30-foot heights in the winter. Why are tsunamis so destructive when other waves just as high or higher can simply be popular tourist attractions? The difference is the wavelength. The famous North Shore giants crash on shore, then recede before crashing on shore once again. A tsunami, on the other hand, is so long that once it starts to wash on the shore, it just keeps coming. What may appear as multiple breaking waves in quick succession is actually water from the same tsunami breaking on top of itself without receding in between. Depending on the shape of the local seafloor, tsunami waves might not even break. That's why they are sometimes called tidal waves. They actually have nothing to do with tides, but they frequently look like a very high tide coming in extremely fast. 
Tsunamis usually don't cause damage by crashing down on top of buildings, but by flowing over land at great speeds. Well, that's what I have to share about the physics of tsunamis. If you live or spend time near the coast, you might want to familiarize yourself with local tsunami warning and evacuation procedures. Remember, if you're near the ocean and feel an earthquake, or if the water recedes quickly, don't wait for an alarm. Get to high ground immediately. A tsunami might be coming. Also, know that tsunamis come in series and that the first may not be the biggest, so the danger may be present for several hours. You can find plenty of videos and images of tsunamis online. Hopefully now, when you see, read, or hear about tsunamis, you'll have a greater understanding of these long, fast, and powerful ocean waves. <laughs>